if you're having trouble with your CVT clutch housing leaking, then you're going to have to remove, at least on the 850 Scrambler, this is the 2016, you're going to have to remove the piece of plastic on the right hand side that covers the exhaust <coughs> because you're going to need to be able to get at um, these clamps here for whether you have a snorkel on or whether you just have the standard uh, set up, you'll have to be able to get those clamps to get that off. So you have to take that off and to take that off you'll also have to take the uh, right hand rear fender off which is basically just a bunch of those plastic clips unless you have the fender flares and there's a few bolts as well. On the other side You need to take off the cross brace that goes from here to here. And this fender brace as well, which is just kind of in the way. And that's really about it, as well as the tire. From there, you can basically get at everything you need. Oh, and of course, the seat you'll need to take off as well. As you can see there's all these bolts all the way around. Look hard because you'll likely miss one when you try to take off the front cover. Alright guys, um, at this stage we've removed the plastic housing for the CVT and we've moved, removed the primary and secondary clutch. And at this point I've um, also cleaned the entire seal of the old uh, gasket all the way around. No easy way to do it really. Um, but let's start with how I got off the uh, the plastic covering. I used a pneumatic um, wrench and took off the bolts. They weren't very tight but it's a bit uh, awkward to get in there. I also used the wrench to get off the secondary clutch because um, you can't get a regular uh, hammer drill in there. As you can see it's a, a wee bit tight um, those two hoses up top will also get in your way, um, getting off the secondary and uh, the plastic uh, housing. Um, so I ended up just getting rid of zip tie there, and that gave you gave me a little bit more maneuver room. Uh, for the 850 Scrambler, or imagine any Sportsman 850, that's the clutch puller you're looking at. Um, I got it on Amazon for 60 bucks. Uh, the things. For removing uh, the seal, I've got a razor blade, a putty knife, a bit of a pick, a scotch pad, a plastic uh, piece which I would kind of use with the scotch pad to get into the uh, the um, the crevices, and then a wire brush. And before I would touch the seal, I would just spray um, WD-40 on it to let which kind of re releases the uh, the seal a bit, uh, breaks it down, and then you can get into it. Um, and then if you're worried about grease or residue after that, I would finish it all off with plenty of brake cleaner. Um, and I did the same thing on the plastic housing part, uh, which had most of the, uh, the seal on it. Um, so I just let the WD-40 sit on it for about 20 minutes and then started with the uh, putty knife and the razor blade and then finished off with um, the scotch pad and a few uh, few coatings of uh, brake cleaner and it looks pretty residue free um, it's okay that it's a little bit um, roughed up I think that'll help with adherence as uh, the picture show this is where I had the leak um, coming into the clutch at the bottom. Um, as you can see on the aluminum housing, it doesn't have the indent as you see on the left and right, so it's a bit of a weak spot there I think in terms of the seal breaking. Um, so I'll be sure to add extra there. My plan is to uh, put red, what is it called, high temp red gasket. Um, RVT on it, front, I'll probably put it on the plastic and the aluminum, let it set for 
an hour or so and then uh, and then uh, bolt it all back together. Hopefully that'll solve the uh, the leaks. Okay, so we've got the red high temp RTV silicone all the way around. Good amount pushed out. I basically put it on wet about a six millimeter bead and then attach the plastic housing pretty quickly after that as it's directed and then I started to tighten everything up about two hours afterwards um, when it started to feel a little bit tacky. I tightened all the bolts to spec. I did add one washer to one of the bolts down there. That was the weak spot from last time. Um, I've seen guys add washers all the way around, but I didn't have that, so there we go. Um, Secondary clutch is coming on and then we'll put on the primary and um, we're going to add a bead, sorry we're just going to wipe on some uh, woodworking mini wax it's called onto the, uh, onto the seal on this side and then for the case covering we'll use black RVT. I've already done this once. Um, so there's already RVT in there. I'll just add another thin layer. Um, and then that'll seal that up. And the mini wax comes off quite nicely. I've also used it for silicone when doing concrete work. Um, it's not goopy and you can hardly see it. And it just provides enough that you can take off the... Uh, take off the casing without hardly any trouble. All right, thanks. Okay, at this point, uh, we've torqued the secondary clutch to about uh, 46 foot-pounds of torque. I had to hold the clutch with both hands, and I had someone else um, use the torque wrench for the secondary. Primary is a bit easier. Uh, you can just slip a snipe through it and torque it that way. Um, don't slip it through this part there. That'll uh, damage the... Uh, the walls that they, the sheaths slide up and down, so just slip it through that one and then onto the uh, drive train in the back. Um, before you put on the primary, make sure that you've cleaned off um, the inside of the primary and the sleeve or the shaft that it goes onto um, with some brake cleaner and just make sure there's no rough spots on it. Cool, we're going to torque this one to uh, 96 foot pounds of torque. And that should be it. Um, to slide the belt on, use your uh, tool that you get with your Polaris. Get it in there. You have to push that like that, and then we can just that opens up the sheaves here, and we can slide the belt on. Um, I usually put it on the primary first, and then slide it onto the secondary. So there's the bolt fully installed. The Polaris should read like that uh, for the install. And mine does ride above the uh, top of the secondary. Feels like it rides a bit high, but we'll see how that works. So we've got our RTV black grease in our groove now. and. Just tacky to the touch, and it'll probably still be pretty wet underneath, but that seems good enough for me. Next thing we're going to do is take this wax, <clears throat> and 
just apply it to the plastic seal. All the way around. And I'll just help it come off easier with and when we have to. Hopefully I won't have to for a while. New belt. And if it doesn't leak, we're ready to go for years, I guess. Cool, so we're just gonna slide that on and then I'll show you the finished product. So we've done up all the uh, bolts. Uh, not completely tight. Still needs a couple half turns to really tighten them down. And we're gonna let this uh, RRTV harden up for about, I don't know, some people use 12 hours. Um, the point is we're making a gasket, or sorry, more like a rubber seal, not really a gasket. So, kind of the idea is to let it um, form into a rubber and then compress the rubber. Whereas I find that when we're making the back seal there with the red RTV, um, we're trying to form a gasket. So, we tighten that down um, to the torque specifications after... Uh, the recommended one hour. Or this one they recommend an hour and then torque it down, but we're going to wait um, significantly longer um, to create more of a rubber seal that we can then just uh, tighten around. And that'll also help with hopefully uh, taking it off in the future because um, it won't have adhered to the outside casing as strongly. Cool. Um, after that, we'll connect our snorkel hoses back up and uh, put on the frame piece again and then the one piece that comes from uh, your fender over to your frame as well and then we'll put the tire back on and we're good to go thanks for watching